Hey everyone, so if you don't know, my name is Rachel and today I want to talk to you a little bit about um, another kind of atheism religion type topic that I've been thinking a little bit about recently. You might know this if you've seen some of my other videos, maybe, maybe not, I don't know, but as an atheist, I've always felt like I don't believe in God because I don't have proof, but I've also felt like I've never really needed to believe in a god for any reason. I don't feel like there's anything missing from my life that religion or god or any kind of like spirituality can, can give me really. I know that I want to be a good person because I want to make myself happy, I want to make the people around me happy, I want to do things to help others. But I want to do that for me, not because a religion's telling me to. Same with you know, if I feel like I need love or guidance or support in something, I go to my family, to my friends. I don't feel the need to go to a church or be part of a religious community to get that. I feel like I'm a good person who tries to do good at least most of the time, and as long as I'm aiming to do that, I have to ask, why does it matter whether I believe in a god or worship a god or not? Recently, one of my commenters brought up Pascal's wager, and while that's a whole complex issue on its own that I want to talk about and address in another video, it did get me thinking about a couple of things about why people feel like they need God, and why if someone's living a good life, does it matter if they believe or worship in a God or not? And I guess, I guess ultimately this all comes back to me questioning, do we even need a God to believe in? Do I need a God? Do you need a God? Does society as a whole need gods and religion? Or the God or whatever? There is the kind of historical aspect of why people turn to religions and God in the first place and things like that, but today I kind of want to talk a little bit about why some people think that they need religion or they need God today in today's society. And I, I did a little bit of research, I went to various websites, I found a few Christian websites, I found a Jehovah's Witness website, um, I found some Catholic websites, I found some Muslim websites, all, all these different places talking about why they believe that we as people need God. And, and here's what I found. So the first argument is that believing in God apparently sets us free from the fear of others' opinions of us, from the fear of failure, or the fear of condemnation. Apparently we need God to set us free from the things that oppress us, and we need God to set us free so we can fully experience and participate in the things that God has given us to enjoy. So in summary, God stops us being scared of things like failure and judgement, and God helps us enjoy things that he's given us to the fullest. Okay, moving on. Another reason I found for apparently why we need God is for a sense of identity. Uh, apparently, you know, we're made in the image of God, so we can't have our own personal identities without including God in that. Therefore, we define ourselves by God, and um, we need him in our life, we need to worship him because of that, apparently. Um, apparently, we are more than just biological parts, we are a living soul, and we are made to partake of God. Life without God is life devoid of God's spirit, which then is to live in the absence of the fullness of life. Apparently, we are never complete until we are completed by our union with God. Again, in summary, this basically means we define ourselves by God, and if we don't believe in him, then a huge part of our identity is missing, and how can we possibly be our whole selves? That's what I'm getting from this. Another apparent reason why we as individuals need God is apparently because God gives you strength. He gives you the strength to put your needs and wants on hold and give another person a sense of love and hope so you can help others even when you need help yourself. Apparently God will give you strength so at a time of desperation you turn to God, you pray to him and suddenly you gain strength. You do not lose hope. You know things will get better. And apparently by letting God into your life he can give you the guidance you need to overcome the bad. So in summary, God is there to give you strength and guide you and stop you doing bad things. And that is why we all need God, because without him we can't overcome the bad things. And finally, the last kind of thing I read uh, quite frequently about why apparently we need God is because God didn't design humans to live independently of him. Uh, they have a need to communicate with their maker, and if we heed God's direction we will live well. To put it another way, to live well and be happy we need God. So. All of those points, lots of quotes from different websites, I'll put all the sources and information and stuff like that down below in the comments. But to very, very briefly summarise, what I got from this, apparently, is that as individuals we need God to stop us fearing failure and judgement, to help define ourselves and who we are, and if we don't believe in him we have a big, empty, undefined part of us, 
Um, we need God because he guides us through the tough times and without him we'll be lost and make bad choices. And because if we want to be happy, we need to believe in and worship God. So for these reasons, I can kind of understand why God is essential to some people in their lives, right? I think it's wonderful if people use God and religion to make sure they feel happy, to make sure they feel fulfilled. That's great for them. But what if I've already kind of fulfilled these criteria in other ways? or fulfilled them myself, or fulfilled them with the people around me? Why is it assumed that I don't have any of this if I'm not religious? Why am I a sinner? Why am I going to hell? Why do you need to pray for me? Or why do you feel the need to pray for me? Why do I need to get these things from God? Why can't I be happy and fulfilled by myself? Why can't I shape my own identity? Why can't I be happy and get through the tough times and make my own decisions? Why can't I just go out and seek guidance from Dan, from my parents, from my amazing sister and brother, my best friends? Why why are they not good enough? Quite often when I've made a point like this in my videos, I then get called arrogant in the comments. People say that I'm prideful. Um, I recently had one comment that told me to humble myself, girl. Um, and that I was prideful and all he could see was pride in me. I find this quite interesting. It, it's like another thing I talked about how another big criticism of atheists is that we make ourselves God, apparently. No, I don't want to be a God, but I want to be able to make my own decisions and I want to be able to just rely on myself to feel good. So let's take a look at these reasons for why we need God point by point. So the first point is that we need God to stop us fearing failure and judgment from others. And yeah, Throughout my life at times, and, and even now, especially now, I do fear failure. But why is that a bad thing? Every time I feel that fear or I'm scared of failing about something, it propels me to work harder and it means that I always try and do the best that I can. Is that really a bad thing? When I fear judgment from other people, I use it as a way to try and make sure I'm acting in the best way possible for both myself and other people. I want to try and be as nice as possible, I want to try and be as helpful as possible. And if that sometimes means stopping and thinking, oh god, are people going to hate me if I do or say this, why is that so bad? Why should we stop fearing failure and judgement altogether? And that's the thing. It, it's judgement from other people, not judgement from God himself, so he's still going to be judging you and that's kind of the one to be afraid of most, I think, if you believe in God. So the next point states that we need God to define who we are because he created us and without him being part of who we are, we're nothing and we're empty and we're no one. Apparently. But I don't believe God made me. I believe the fact I'm here at all is pretty incredible because it was all chance, it was pure luck. I'm no one special, there was no plan for me. I'm just a bundle of cells which happened to grow at a certain time and develop a consciousness and that somehow ended up with me being here right now. There's, there's no plan for me. I was never planned. I was never designed. I was never like purposefully created. I'm just here and that's amazing. And I'm gonna make the most of this awesome opportunity. But just because I don't think God designed or planned me or made me, that doesn't mean there's this big unfulfilled part of me. I see nothing wrong with being here entirely by chance. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything by accepting that I don't have a designer. If anything, it's kind of more freeing to know that I'm here sort of randomly and that this is my one chance and I've just got to go for it because it makes it all so much more exciting. I feel so free knowing that I can do whatever I want to do. I can achieve whatever I want to achieve. It's not all planned out for me. I can make those choices myself. It's exciting and amazing. And I kind of prefer that to thinking that there's some designer up there who put me here and planned all this for me. And he's, he's like playing me like a game of chess. That's a little bit scary to me. I get a little bit rambly again. But basically the point is that I don't need to define myself by God. I don't feel unfulfilled. I want to define who I am myself and by the people around me, not by whoever apparently you think made me. Next up is this idea that we can only get guidance from God and without God we make bad choices. And no, I don't need a God to guide me. That's what I have the incredible people in my life for. I have myself, I have my friends, I have my family. And as strange as this might sound, I don't mind if I make bad decisions occasionally because sometimes that's how you learn to be better and do better and stop being an idiot. 
And finally, this idea that you can only be happy with God in your life or with God by your side or by worshipping God or whatever. I'm perfectly happy without God. So what's wrong with that? Why is it only real happiness if it comes from believing and worshipping in a God? Ultimately, if we just think about this like biologically, right? When you like worship God or whatever and feel happiness from that, the exact same stuff happens in your brain to make you feel that happiness as when you just do something fun like play a game or read a book or watch a film or whatever else makes you happy and fulfilled and feel great. The exact same biological processes are happening in your brain and your body and the same chemicals are being released. And of course I'm simplifying this a hell of a lot, but the point is, it's the same feelings of happiness, so why is one apparently better or more important than the other? Why can't we just be content with making ourselves happy or having the people around us make us happy? Why is it only real if it comes from God? Why do we assume that you can't gain those incredible feelings without worshipping or believing? That's silly. So we have now established that I don't feel like I need a God in my life to be happy and fulfilled and do cool, awesome things. I believe that everything I'm apparently supposed to get from worshipping a God or religion or whatever, I believe I can get those elsewhere in my life or from myself or from the people around me. Brilliant for me, right? I'm happy. Religious people, you're probably happy too doing your own thing. I'm more than happy for you to continue. So why aren't you happy for me to continue like this? And I'm not saying all of you, some people, you're fine, you're like, atheist, do your thing, be happy, it's cool. And to those people, you're awesome. But to the other people who talk about how they're gonna pray for me and I need to be saved and I'm this and I'm this, I just find it a little odd. I'm more than willing to just carry on with my life, being happy and living it the way that I do. And if I get to the end of my life and it turns out I'm wrong about God, then I'm wrong and I'll deal with the consequences then. But I don't want to have to make changes and sacrifices now just because there's a what if later on. Because this is what I say about Pascal's wager. It's not a 50-50 thing that God exists, if you ask me. It's like a 90-10 thing that he doesn't exist. So why should I not live the best life I can now and feel happy and fulfilled and do everything I want to do just because there's that 10% chance that there might possibly be a god after we die who doesn't like us. Maybe. And of course this is where things start to seem unfair as well. If a god does exist and he's just gonna punish me because I didn't believe in him, and that just feels a bit arrogant, doesn't it? Very recently I was told by a commenter, and I quote, saying, if you stop making bad choices by turning away from evil and confessing your wickedness to God, he is faithful and just to forgive. Humble yourself, girl. Humble yourself. Pride goes before destruction. All I see is pride in you. And basically, I tried to kind of like laugh this comment off and just be like, lol, like I'm not taking this seriously. Um, you know, you're telling me I'm a sinner. You're telling me I've been wicked. It's kind of insulting. It's very hurtful. I don't want to engage in a kind of deep conversation around that because you're clearly just gonna throw insults at me, so I'm just gonna lol at it and pretend I'm not taking it seriously. So that's, that's what I did. But let's just kind of take a minute to think about what he was saying here. His only basis for saying that I make bad choices, for saying I'm a sinner, for calling me wicked, and that he sees pride in me. The only basis for all of that is that I'm an atheist who sometimes makes videos talking about why I'm an atheist and talking about why I like science. That is it. So let's just talk completely hypothetically for a minute, right? And just assume that I am a thoroughly good person. I've never done anything bad. I know, I know, just, just bear with me and try it, okay? So I've never done anything bad. I've never hurt anyone, never done nothing wrong. I've never even worn the fabric of the two materials woven, whatever. I've never done anything that the Bible says is wrong. The only thing is that I don't believe there's a God and I don't pray to him, I don't worship him, I don't ask him for forgiveness because I don't think I've done anything that deserves forgiveness. Apparently I'm still going to hell because I haven't worshipped that God. Apparently I'm prideful and that's disrespectful to God and he's gonna punish me for eternity. On the other hand, I could do bad stuff, I could hurt people, I could murder people, I can steal and lie and cheat at things, I can do all the bad things but if I worship a god and I pray to him and I say, God, do you, do you fancy, do you fancy forgiving me? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He's gonna forgive me and I'll go to heaven. How is that fair? 
Religious people like to talk about how religion makes them a good people, and that atheists can't be good people because where do they get their morals from? But it seems that above everything else, all it comes down to is how much you suck up to God, and how much you flatter him, how much you pray to him, how much you beg him and tell him he's wonderful. And if a god like that existed, I'm not sure I'd like him very much. I think I'd rather do good things for the sake of doing good things, and for the sake of making the people I care about happy. I don't want to do good things to please an arrogant god who won't even prove if he exists or not just because he doesn't want to and why should he? So, do we need a god? That's basically what this is all supposed to be coming back to. Well, you can make up your own mind, but I honestly don't think we do. I know being religious might encourage some people to do good, and, you know, scrapping religion might encourage some people to do bad things because they think they finally can. I think I can lead a good life without religion, without a god. Whether they're religious or not, I think the majority of people will want to do good things for the sake of doing good things. I have that, you know what, I have that faith in people. We're gonna throw that word out there. Now, the question of what would happen to a society if we just suddenly got rid of a god, that's a whole different thing. And, and then there's a question as well of what would happen to a society that never had a god, what, what would that be like? I don't know, there's some interesting things to think about, um, but ultimately what I want to say is I don't think I need a god, I'm perfectly happy, what do you think? Do you need a god? Do you want a god? Do you think I'm a prideful sinner? Let me know! But for now, I'm sorry this has been a long video, but hopefully you enjoyed it, and I'll see you again soon.